going on everyone? So let me ask you, what makes the perfect beard? But not even perfect, what makes a good beard? Is it like a super long bushy beard or is it more of like a mid-length wedge style or is it a five o'clock shadow? And I think the answer is it depends, right? It depends on the individual, it depends what your goals are, and it depends on if you even like beards because really it's all personal preference. Now, I think for me personally, I like the shorter version like I have. But a couple years ago, I did grow it out, but it kind of got to be a little too much in my opinion, because at the same time that I was growing out my beard, I was also growing out my hair and trying to do some crazy stuff with it. So I've kind of settled down a little bit these days, and this is what I'm currently running with at the moment. But here's the thing, whatever beard style you have, there's a few rules that you do need to follow, especially if you have a shorter beard like I do. Now, truth be told, I wasn't blessed with the chiseled jawline DNA, and the fact is a beard can hide a not so great jawline. I mean, sure, I could stand to lose a couple pounds here and there, but all this junk down here is what it is. It's always been there and it's not going anywhere. So growing a beard and shaping it in certain ways can help to visually define your jawline. Now, rule number one is to let it grow. If you're starting from scratch or if you're starting from a five o'clock shadow and you wanna see how your beard might look a little bit longer, you've got to let it grow. 30 days is the minimum, but I'd probably give it like 45 to 60 days to really see what you're working with. A lot of guys start letting their beard grow out and then they start seeing some patchy spots and totally give up. I get it, but you have to let it go. Because what happens is as you let the hair start growing, it tends to fill in some of those lighter areas. And also some hairs grow faster than others. So what you might find over time is that those patchy areas start to fill in on their own. I mean, for me, the hair on my chin grows like crazy, but the sides of my face and my cheeks, like not so much. I mean, I think it's good enough, but it's far from perfect. All right, rule number two is defining the edges and determining where you want your beard to stop, right? So if possible, don't touch it for a few days or even a week and let things start filling in. Then you can go back and define the edges. Basically, you're cleaning up your cheeks and your neck. I recommend starting the edging process with rule number three, a good grooming tool, because you'll be able to see exactly where the blades are going. And if you don't have the proper tool, the one that I've been using for probably the last couple of years now, and the one I highly recommend to everyone is the Beardscape V2 from Brio. Brio is today's sponsor, but even if they weren't, I would still talk about this thing and I would still recommend it to everyone who's watching this video. So the V2 is an updated version of their flagship trimmer and it's designed around this powerful battery and motor to trim quickly and quietly without any snags or pulling. And the battery life on this thing is insane. I wish my phone battery lasted this long. Now, just some of the upgrades include an improved screen and display, a travel lock feature and improved ergonomics. The blade is ceramic and it stays sharp for years and it's also adjustable so you can dial in the right length every single time. Now, these adjustments make the V2 perfect for, of course, facial hair, but also body hair, since you can get a little clearance between the blade and your skin, making it perfect for those sensitive areas if you're so inclined. Now the reversible guards also add a ton of range, making the Beardscape V2 perfect for full beard trims and even haircuts. Now the zero blade, if included in your bundle, basically trims down to the skin, giving you an almost clean shaven look, adding even more versatility to this trimmer. And you can use that for like cleaning up around your neck and your cheeks, or use it in place of a razor for a very close trim. The Beardscape comes with a two year warranty and the backing of an amazing customer support team. So do yourself a favor and get the best beard and body trimmer out there. Just click the link in the description and with the purchase of your Beardscape V2, you will also get the zero blade attachment completely free. Hurry and get yours right now because this offer is only good while these supplies last. Thank you Brio for supporting my channel and sponsoring today's video. All right, let's circle back to defining your edges. So one of the mysteries of lining up the edge of your beard at your neck is where do you stop? Let me solve that mystery for you guys right now. Take your finger and place it right above your Adam's apple. That's where you stop. This is the point where your head attaches to your neck. So from there, make a line to about the bottom of your earlobe while staying underneath your jawline and you're good. 
One of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of guys make in this area is they'll trim the beard too high up on the jawline. It's a really weird look because it looks unfinished, immature, and it looks like you made a mistake. Listen, the idea is to enhance your jawline, but you can't do that if your beard is cutting your jawline basically in half. Okay, take your grooming tool, in this case, of course, the Brio with the zero blade attachment, and start making a line, right? From there, trim or shave everything below that line down onto your neck. And one quick thing about neck beards, unless you're a rock star, try to avoid the neck beard because it just makes you look sloppy and for most of us, it's just not a good look. Okay, rule number four is to use a beard brush and a blow dryer as your beard starts to develop. The idea is to keep the hairs laying down in the same general direction so it doesn't look like you've got scraggly pubic hair growing out of your face. And because I use a blow dryer on my hair anyway, as soon as that's done, I take my little brush and I start brushing everything down in the same general direction while hitting it with the blow dryer. Okay, rule number five is to avoid beard dandruff. Now for most of us, using just a general face moisturizer does the trick. I mean, I recommend a face moisturizer anyway, but another way is to use beard oil. I think for me though, and with the shorter beard length, I think that beard oil is a little bit overkill, but if you've got like a longer, fluffier beard, I would absolutely recommend using beard oil. Another thing you can do though is to use a face scrub or an exfoliant because this helps remove dead skin layers in your beard and allows your moisturizer or your beard oil to do its job much better. Think of it this way. Women have makeup and all sorts of hair products and tools to make themselves look more beautiful. But what do we have in our arsenal to increase our handsome? Not much, but we do have the ability to play around a little bit with our facial hair and try different things in order to change up our look a little bit. And listen, one more thing. If you made it this far, you are one of the true legends and I appreciate you. So please consider subscribing if you're not already and hit that like button to give a little bump to the YouTube algorithm. And as always, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Live well, and I'll see you in the next one.